What is blockchain? Okay, hold on to your hats. It's going to get very technical here because crypto is state of the art and we may be using some terms that might seem difficult to grasp. Are you ready? Here we go. A blockchain is a non-editable database stored across an array of computers. That's basically it. It's just a database, often referred to as a ledger, which is, in accounting terminology, a list of transactions, usually in sequential order, on X date, person Y transferred commodity N to person Z. That's primarily what goes in a ledger. Okay, so I'm oversimplifying things a bit. Different blockchains have extra features like Ethereum's smart contracts that I'll go into later. But let's start with the basics. The main function of blockchain is simply as a database, a ledger, a record. Blockchain has a few other characteristics, obviously. It's what people call immutable, which is a fancy word for you can't change the data once it's written to the ledger. So it's a write once, read many table. Blockchain also uses cryptography to verify that each entry in its database is original and hasn't been altered. It does this using a technology called Merkle trees, which are basically arrays of data that generate special unique codes called hashes or digital signatures, which are then combined with later records and linked together so that if you alter any of the data, the hashes don't line up anymore and the system is identified as corrupted. Now, I could go into the math and tech details of this, but it really doesn't matter. The end result is you have a database that could be guaranteed to be, quote, original and not altered later. Blockchain didn't invent cryptographic hashes. They've been around for more than a century. And cryptography itself goes back thousands of years, whose name is derived from Greek meaning to write a hidden secret. It should be noted that core technology used by the blockchain, Merkle trees, has been around for decades prior to the invention of crypto. This tech was patented in 1979. It has limited uses because most databases need to be editable. A write-only database is nowhere near as useful as one that can be updated. And you can use similar cryptographic hashes to verify the integrity of a read-write ledger. So there are very limited applications where the technology is needed. So that's basically what blockchain is. Does it sound super innovative? Pay no attention to the gas lights. What flickering? You don't understand. Beyond the basics of blockchain, implementing this system in a decentralized context creates additional problems that have to be solved. And this introduces a number of other unique mechanics in the world of crypto technology. Mo decentralization, mo problems. When you set up a regular database, it's usually somewhat centralized. It's located on a specific computer, or in the case of a cloud-based system, across an array of virtual servers. And the operator, referred to as the DBA or database administrator, is in charge of provisioning, allocating the resources necessary to make the database work. As the DBA, you can make sure you have everything you need to run the database. Usually there's a company or agency involved that pays for the resources you're administering. You can also highly optimize the network because you can pick where and how the systems are hosted. Centralized networks are great. They can easily scale to meet demand and you can determine who can connect to your network and who cannot, which significantly reduces the likelihood of hacks and attacks. With blockchain's decentralized nature, it's not that easy. The idea behind blockchain is that since nobody is in charge, anybody who wants to participate in the network can do so. Just install the software, fire up your own node, and you're on the network. All the nodes talk to each other and share information. You can have a huge array of nodes all around the world. This upside is also a downside. If nobody is in charge, who pays for the operation? So now some type of material incentive has to be introduced into the design in order to entice people to help operate the network. This is where the crypto mining and tokenization component comes into play. 